Hello my soccer universe. Let's review what was happening over the past two weeks in Serie A. And no, I, I did not do a video last week because Milan lost. It was simply timing did not work out and the timing is also kind of a little bit odd this week as well. But you know, maybe over two weeks I have to remember what happened the previous <laughs> weekend a little bit more. Uh, but over those two, two weeks we get maybe a little bit more tendencies. Although if you're a fan of the Roman teams, what an odd week it must have been. I mean, Lazio losing uh, at home to Sanatana, losing at Feyenoord, the Roma fans being ha 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 ha, and then Lazio win the derby. Go figure. Uh, this is one of those things uh, where you thought that Roma fans have the upper hand, Lazio fans don't, no, they have the last laugh for now. Uh, and to be fair, Lazio this season... I have not seen too much of them, but whenever I saw them, uh, and also from what they had, they seem to be a really well-oiled team at this very moment. More on them later. I think the main main thing is still that Napoli uh, is just on a different level at this moment. And I have said it before and I repeat myself, um, at, in this form, they're absolute title contenders. However, the big caveat for me is that there is a World Cup coming up. And yes, Kvaratskhelia and Viktor Osimen are not going to World Cup. And I think there are quite a few other uh, players which might help. But uh, what it might mean also is that um, they are getting out of the ring. Because at the moment they are just a well-oiled machine that doesn't even rely on individual players. I mean, Kvaratskhelia was missing an At uh, Atalanta and Napoli probably should have uh, rightfully lost that game. However, they won this. And this is the mark of a champion. So... Uh, at this very, very moment, it really seems uh, difficult to see that anyone else but Napoli is going to win the title because the two big challengers, Milan and Inter, both look a little bit rough around the edges, although I think Milan is a little bit more consistent if they are concentrated and if they're fully concentrated on the, on, on the game because they suffered another loss uh, in these two weeks to Torino. Uh, which was all hinged on, yeah, we want to progress in the Champions League. You saw it from the squad that was put out there uh, to play to a tutorial. You saw it in the lax attitude, namely of Rafa Leao um, in there. And then you end up losing a game and have a really, really a stinker. And uh, the past weekend was then in the end not much better, although the performance, I think, was much way more positive, but it still took a lot of time. Um, I need to mention this and I will mention it in, in, in the game as well. I think we have for the first time in history that a Maldini or a member of the Maldini clan scored a goal against Milan. Spezia. Uh, I think his only goal for Milan. He also scored against Spezia. So uh, that was uh, rather remarkable. But from the headlines, so we have both Milan teams being kind of uh, not very consistent, but I think think for me um, almost the outstanding thing is we ha I have been lambasting Juve a whole lot uh, if not in the videos I have at least been privately saying Juve is a real mess and we saw in the Champions League they were not good and what really annoyed me with Juve is their transfer strategy uh, for most of the time however there's one really really good thing with Juve and Allegri and maybe well, it seems like Allegri would be a prime candidate to, to get fired. Thanks to his contract, he will not get fired, at least not during the season. Uh, and they're paying off a few other managers as, as, as well. But what Allegri is suddenly doing is so un-Italian and in many ways also so un -Juve like They're playing the kids. I was not aware that Juve had actually invested in a B team that is playing a thing in Serie G. Uh, down there. And now they're pulling the players like Miretti and Fagioli up into the first team and you know what they are performing they're actually the highlights of the season so far uh if from a juventus point of view it's not the pogba who the only thing we know is that he's out of the, of the world cup it is not uh di maria who honestly i adore di maria overall and i think he is he is a great player however he just wanted to have a one-year contract to sign for somebody to be fit for the world cup it's ridiculous. Uh, this is not something that I, if I was you, I would have signed up for. But it's uh, someone who probably will shift a few jerseys. Not the way he is, he's, he's performing. But I think um, under the surface, 
I see something growing at Juventus. Now you just have to bolster up your midfield and, um, you know, make players better. Kostic had a, a wonderful game against Inter. So that will uh, that is probably a good signing uh, in a way. We gotta see, but finally Juventus seem to be living up to up up to him because Juventus. If you didn't know, Juventus means youth in Latin, and that's exactly what they are probably should go for at this moment. Get rid of all the aging stars and uh, build with the young team like Milan have done, and see where where they came from. I'm posted with a few uh, experienced players. And you might be onto something. I would say, uh, after all this preamble, let's uh, go in. This was round 12 here, which started out with Napoli completely destroying Sassolo, uh, Victor Osimen and Quarazgelia running riot. Uh, Osimen scoring three, Quarazgelia uh, scoring one, assisting the first two by Osimen. It is just wonderful to watch. Quarazgelia, though, a little bit uh, injured already. So he missed in the next game. So uh, he needs to be managed well. Uh, but again, Napoli won without Osimen. Victor Osimen gives them the, the, uh, the cherry up top for sure. But the squad is deep enough and well oiled enough that they don't rely on the individual brilliance of either one of the, uh, the players, the star players that they have. And I think this is the most remarkable thing and the great building job that Spalletti has done. And it might well have been to just get rid of the old stars that, yes, were beloved and are adored and probably still could perform. But um, they were kind of hindering and get young, hungry players in there or just make smart decisions. Uh, Napoli, the, oh, it is since day one of the season, I can only applaud Nap Napoli. And uh, there have been two games so far, as we'll talk about one of those where I think they should have lost and they still managed to win this one. Uh, so really, really, really great stuff. Speaking of the young guns for you, yeah, for Jolly, more on him a little bit later, actually scores the winner at Lecce for them. So a uh, big win, big, big, big win, uh, important win for Juve, uh, especially uh, this was during the Champions League campaign that did not go Juve's way at all. On the other side, Inter just look at some doors. Some door I barely had, had a chance. It was just how how many will Inter score? Uh, De Vrij, Barella with a uh, great goal in Korea, score three. And this was always, I mean, I'm really worried about Sampdoria at this moment because I, I have a feeling Sampdoria will go down. Um, although I would hate to see that because, you know, some of the best jerseys of the league <laughs> are going down. Uh, Udine don't go anywhere at the moment. Uh, they had a great start, but now fizzling out and uh, more behaving like a mid-table team with getting draws and a uh, very rarely wins. Uh, Fiorentina win as sort of derby, also Spezia's in Liguria. But uh, it's close enough that there are some ties there, win 2-1. Uh, absolute crazy game between Lazio and Salernitana. I mean, Lazio should have been home and host with this one. Zaccania giving Lazio the lead. They're having chances to um, uh, to make it 2-0. Um, and then Cantreva, after a nice uh, Mazzocchi pass, Cantreva, a beautiful lob over the goalkeeper, completely changes the complexion of the, of the game. Suddenly, Lazio, who looked so well on track, completely lose it in uh, probably one of the most entertaining games uh, over the past uh, two weeks, then Fazio, so Cantareva, former Lazio player, then Fazio, former Roma player, gives uh, Salernitana the lead, totally against the run of play, but then they see it home and uh, Dia makes it 3-1, and in, in, in between the big one is, with at 1-1, one, one, Sade takes Luis Alberto off and puts Milinko Savage uh, on. Milinkovic Savage, who is only on one yellow card away from missing for the derby. And he just thought, oh no, we need a special extra to win this game. And he even admitted afterwards, yeah, I may have overthought that one. Because of course, it was it was a ridiculous yellow card. But of course he gets the yellow card. Of course he's missing for the derby. In the end, it did not matter. But it was definitely not something to lift up the spirits at Lazio. What can I say? tell you about Torino-Milan? Um... A, the game should have been done after five minutes or uh, ten minutes maybe. Leao having two uh, the sitters as chances. The first one maybe not as much, but the second one, it needs to be a goal. 
and Brahim Diaz assisting the, uh, both of them. Milan looking actually really good at that point, but then Torino shook themselves and kind of got control of the game and then two, uh, I don't want to say defensive errors, but two mishaps and Gigi Miranchuk within two minutes scored two for Torino and this was always going to be a steep hill for Milan to climb back and they did not look good. He took off Leao, so you take all, out all the speed in the, in the attack um, and then the goal that Milan got should have been a foul. And Messias puts it then out wide. Honestly, it was not a good performance at all. It was a deserved loss. However, when I look at the lineup, it was to me clear. This is the game in between two important Champions League games. This was the full focus. That they say, okay, maybe we get something out of this game. And Turin is always a hard side to play against. You know Jurich teams are uh, rather intense. It just didn't work out. Um, it was a little bit of a bummer, I have to say, but on the, on the other side, there was an ulterior motive there. Of course, this meant that Napoli is pulling away even more. Uh, maybe six points. I mean, Milan were, all, I think, eight points behind Inter at one point last season. So, you know, uh, maybe get through the World Cup, win the last few games, and you're still within reach of Napoli, and Napoli will hit probably a wall at one point but uh, it was a rather sobering uh, sight to see on a, on a day where actually Lask had already won for me so I could have had the perfect weekend no it was not meant to be uh, Roma on Monday uh, also find themselves 1-0 down at Verona and Verona is also a team that does not look good at this very 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 moment however they undo themselves with Davidovic being sent off Zaniolo scores in stoppage time to make it 1-1 uh, and then very, 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 very late, late on Roma get the win in the 88th and the 92nd. Roma also a team that I am less than convinced at this moment, but you know, again, it just needs to, uh, the need, need, needs to be run and the team I'm wearing, Bologna wins at Monza. Um, Bologna again gearing more towards mid-table, more on them in just a little bit. I said it's going now to the current, uh, the past weekend. I said Udine uh, going more mid table, yes, more draws uh, against Lecce. So, uh, and I will show you proper in the, in the next week. If you see the performance graph of Udinese, it goes up and comes down again because now they are not picking up the points anymore. Salantana cannot back up their, uh, uh, their win at Lazio, only 2 2 against Cremonese. But we gotta talk Atalanta Napoli. That was uh, second against first, and it was a truly great game. And it was Atalanta came out storming and outplayed Napoli left and right. Probably should have had, had a goal before Lukman converted a penalty um, with an Oziman from an Oziman handball. And I really gotta say, the way that Lukman took this penalty, you cannot take a penalty better. It's the perfect penalty. It was really, really well played. And uh, Atalanta were asking the right questions of Nap Napoli, who were lucky to be only one goal down. However, if you have a Victor Osimen, you are bound for greatness. And it's just a Zielinski cross. And with the first shot and goal, you see uh, Demiral had uh, Osimen more or less under control, but with one little shove. When the cross was made, it was not a foul. It was just, it just, just a little shot. He gets the separation, jump, jumps up, puts it instinctively into the net. First shot and go, Napoli uh, go, uh, go get 1-1. One, one. And Atalanta is seemingly shaken. And then Osimen assists Elmas in the 35th to make it 2-1. Completely against the run of play. Uh, Atalanta then launch a full-on attack. Only hit the crossbar. Cannot claw themselves back. And again, a game that probably uh, Napoli should have lost. They win again. It's very similar to the win they got at Milan. Where also, I think Milan were largely the better team. Um, but they get the win. And this is truly the mark of a champion. The mark of a champion uh, is also when you win a game that uh, is very much hanging in the balance. Is what uh, Milan did. I, at this moment, I don't believe that Milan will win this title. Because Napoli is so much better, but uh, we are, uh, Milan is not out of it. That's for sure. The game was 
very entertaining, especially for some with many chances on both sides, the majority going, of course, for Milan, where I think Avanda said, Leal, you need to score. So Avanda's goal for Hernandez took a whole lot of time to confirm that it was not offside. Um, I think five minutes almost, uh, which is ridiculous. I actually think that uh, there should be on the refereeing, uh, on VAR, there should be like a one minute, a maximum two minute limit. And if then a decision has not been found, we have to go with the on-field call uh, to speed things up. Speed things up. But it was really an entertaining game with chances left and right. But Milan probably should have led by two goals at the half. And that came back to bite them. Um, ben Asser, who has been really good, came off at halftime. Tonali came on. Uh, was not really a break in Milan's game, but um, it kind of felt a little bit uh, off. Um, the, it looked not as fluid anymore. The, the chances were not, not, not created anymore. And But uh, Spezia were not really threatening. But that's exactly the point. Because just in January, when uh, they won a freak game, again, they get the goal. And who gets the goal? Daniel Maldini. On loan from Milan, he did not celebrate. And again, he is part of the Milan clan. He is Paolo's son. And I don't know what Paolo must have been thinking up in the stands. I mean, on one side, his boy is scoring a goal. Great. But it's against his team that he is building. I mean, I don't know what is, uh, what's going on. I mean, he has a stone-faced... Uh, he, he was stone-faced. I, I know when he scored his first goal against Spezia of all teams. Uh, I could see his smile and how proud he was. But at this point, yeah, yes, I think it was good that he went uh, to Spezia to get a little bit more playing time uh, and build up and then go back to Milan because he is very talented and and he's still only, I think, 21 or something, or something like that. There is a player in there. But that he scores his only two goals for Milan against Spezia and for Spezia against Milan is just astonishing. And that seemed to be for a long time the big story that Maldini is killing Milan. Because Tonali scores a wonderful goal, however, there's a foul in the build-up. I hated that this was taken away from the foul. Uh, because A, it was a brilliant goal by Tonali. And second of all, it was so many stops uh, before that you could arguably say it's a different phase. Whatever. It was disallowed and probably rightfully so. Milan then launched a full auto attack with the Cataleri, Rebic and Giroud coming on in the 72nd. And uh, Giroud already threatened and then he gets um, he gets the goal after being involved in a little uh, bust up in between where um, Zola, Giroud and Hernandez all get. It, it got a very emotional game because Milan wanted to get the win and uh, Spezia didn't give them any. And then Giroud scores the, uh, the winner A. A brilliant cross from Tonali, but even better the finish, how he's jumping and getting in there for a 35-year-old. A brilliant goal. However, a 35-year-old should know I'm already on a yellow and I should not take off my shirt to do the Hulk celebration because I, I will get signed off. And he saw, yeah, I'm stupid. And he, you could see how he's then putting the shirt quickly on. No, no, I, I didn't do that. Do no, no, no. You go off. Now, we can discuss. I think this rule should be absolutely abolished because it's stupid. It's the uh, and you know the the kicker would, would have been if the goal would have not counted like it was for Milik uh, for you for a while. But yeah, um, it did not go well. Fortunately, stoppage time, nothing happened, so a ten man Milan could go on. And yeah, Rebic was uh, a pest in Spezia side. Two more win. We don't need, I didn't need more. Uh, it's the three points in, in, in his back. I am wearing Bologna and uh, Bologna have been actually having the most surprising results. Turin is again a team you cannot predict. Very unpredictable. Um, um, they have a look, one lead through Lukic. However, what makes me proud is not only does Marco Anatovic. Now, uh, Stefan Posch from Austria also gets a goal and, and the winning goal after Orsolini uh, equalizes. Uh, so yeah, Bologna becoming now the Austrian team in Serie A. Uh, Mons is stabilizing with a 2-0 uh, win over Hellas. Fiorentina winning at Sampdoria and Hellas in Sampdoria at the moment. They seem to be really, really in trouble. The big derby, we cannot really talk much about. It was not a good game and it was decided by a really um, a bad defensive error where Pedro, uh, Pedro is uh, pressuring... Um, Ibanez, who loses the ball, he plays it to Felipe Anderson, who scores the goal. 
Why did Lazio play in white? That was probably the biggest question for me uh, because I think it would have worked either way. But other than that, it was not a great game to watch and the Roma did not have much in the tank. A game that also could have used a little bit more. There was also more space uh, there. It was definitely Juve against Inter. Where Inter, it was not a great game. Inter had more chances in the first half. However, it was not a, a, like this end-to-end -end, uh, heated game. It was kind of, yeah, meh, it was so and so. Uh, it was not good to watch. However, what was good to watch it was Kostic did in the 52nd second minute. After Chalonoglu hit the crossbar um, with, with a shot. I mean, uh, Szczesny got his hand on it and that's why it hit the crossbar. But uh, after a corner for Inter, Kostic gets the ball and is strong, goes in and Rabio runs. And it was a really well worked counter attack um that the way that rabio finishes was really good and maybe rabio is finally coming good i don't know quite but uh I've, i was never very convinced of him but at least now in this juve team he seems to be one of the better players uh as as of now um danilo then heads in a second one but however his head hits the hand and probably that's why it's going in it was actually uh, hard to see and it's another vr that took longer but actually that goal and that second goal really really hurt inter they they barely could get on the field again um and do something so something in the end it's for jolly after another costage assist uh who gets the second goal and again it's the young guys and that is something promising to see if you're a Juve fan. Um, looking now at the overall standings after these two rounds, Napoli flying high, six points ahead of Milan. They got rid of Atalanta. Uh, Milan is the only team that kind of can keep up. I think Lazio is underrated. I think Lazio can be a really, really tough opponent. Uh, Atalanta, Juve, Roma, Inter, I think those four will probably go for the last spot. I mean, I'm singing high praises of Lazio. Let's see. But it might be that it's me, Na, Napoli, Milan, Lazio, who are in the top three. Uh, on the bottom, it's still relatively open, but we see on the bottom some Doria and Hellas. Does not look good, but however, it's Cremonese, thanks to their rating, that is a little bit down, and Spezia and Lecce are also not out of it at all. Uh, so, let's see. Um, if we look expected standings, Sampdoria goes down, Spezia and Kremlis a little bit ahead of um, Hellas in terms of going down still. Uh, on top, yes, Inter probably will make that. I think Inter should finish top three. Maybe I spoke too soon with Lazio, although I could see Lazio finishing ahead of uh, Juve, Roma, potentially in Atalanta. So yeah, I'm not quite sold on this top four right, right here. I think that the three that remained in the Champions League and what an achievement that was for Italy and also uh, all of them got rather positive draws overall. Um, I think those three will probably remain in the Champions League spots. Let's see. Uh, we have, before the World Cup, we have two rounds. One midweek round already today in the evening we have Cremonese against Milan and of course Napoli against Empoli. Uh, sounds good. Uh, that could, those could be two really, really interesting games. Um, Bologna is playing at Inter. Uh, probably some revenge in there because Bologna actually made uh, Milan champions. Um, and then, yeah, Verona, Juve, Torino, Sampdoria. It, there is not really the big standout game in there. Probably a solo Roma because Roma really needs to bounce back. However, on the weekend, we end with um, three really good games. Atalanta, Inter. This was a... Atalanta is the one team that uh, that Inter cut uh, where where Inter got uh, regularly results against a top team. So uh, maybe that's a, a little bit good. Roma Torino always a tricky fixture. Napoli Udine now the, I think the spice of that one is out of there. Uh, but I think it's the last two that are really the big ones. Uh, Milan Fiorentina is always a traditional uh, duel, and as I said. Firmly favorites Milan, but Fiorentina is always the intention. And Juve Lazio is a proper uh, top fight. So uh, to end it before the World Cup, we, uh, Serie A goes actually out with a bang. Any case, that was it from me for Serie A. We'll probably see each other next week in the World Cup run-up. I have to close out all the leagues and I will do Serie A, of course, as well. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.
Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!